Okay. Uh, welcome everyone to this uh, session of the Enhancing Clinical Practice and Outcomes stream of the SNOMED CT Expo 2023. Uh, my name is Michael Jones and I'm a MAP Specialist at SNOMED International and I will be moderating this session. Um, just a reminder that all questions uh, will be answered at the conclusion of the presentation. Uh, online attendees, please use the Q&A button uh, to type your questions to the presenter. And for those of you in the room, you can use the microphone located in the centre. Uh, just you know, stand up and go and ask your question. Um, I am pleased to introduce uh, Eric Erickson from uh, Contea Eros, who will be presenting on how to establish efficient knowledge support in healthcare systems with varying degrees of SNOM and CT implementation. Eric, please go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, apologies for the long title in the program. I'll try to make it a bit shorter here. Um, so I'm uh, Eric. I, as you said, I work in Contair. We're a consultancy company based in Oslo, but uh, so we're doing terminology, Snow and City, but also, but we also. Um, um, make our own uh, clinical decision support solutions and um, I will uh, very much speak uh, from a clinical perspective uh, like Dr. Lario from Brazil we heard uh, the previous at uh, the start of this session uh, I've been working most of my life as a, as a doctor I'm a neurologist uh, before I last year joined Contair so uh, it will be, be from a clinical perspective um, um, and I will tell you something about what the situation is uh, in Norway and a small country in Northern Europe and uh, what solutions we can make uh, by using SNOMED CT. So um, a bit of overview, a bit about Norway and the healthcare system and SNOMED CT, how far we've come, uh, why CDS, why we use SNOMED CT. Uh, uh something about how we can do that and finally some examples of different solutions um so uh norway is uh, a small country in northern europe uh, quite dispersed population uh, especially up north uh, 5.4 million or something uh, and we are divided into four health regions which run the hospitals uh, and the municipalities run the GP offices, the nursing homes and so on. We have a public health system. Um, every Norwegian citizens are entitled to healthcare services, free or charged or paid for by the tax bill. Um, so so we have actually one system but there are still uh, big challenges in interoperability and exchange of, of health data um we're not that much bigger than iceland or, well we are but we we'll spoke with some someone from iceland and they've come quite further than us uh, our health care expenditure is about 10 percent of the gdp which is uh, on the eu average approximately and uh, but much less than the us so uh, shortly about norway and snowman city we became members of snowman international in 2017 um, and uh, the nrc is the norwegian directorate of e-health represented here uh, yeah they support the implementation and Nomad City initiatives across the healthcare system. So something about the uh, Snowman City and Norway. Uh, the major initiative and implementation is in the middle of Norway um, health region and Trondheim, uh, which is uh, uh, maybe someone heard of, uh, where it's called Healthy Platform and they're implementing one common EHR for the entire health region. The largest university hospital went live approximately a year ago, um, and where they use Nomad CT as the primary terminology for for diagnosis and medications. Here are some examples of other initiatives. Uh, the Norwegian Directorate of Health, and also they have tags, semantically tagged a lot of their or some of their content. So the same with the Health Norge, that's uh, more like a patient portal. Uh, um, with the information for patients. Um, and EL, as you see, is a commercial provider of, of recommendation guidelines for, for doctors. Uh, it's widely used by most GPs and also hospitals. 
Um, the Felis catalog is the Norwegian pharmaceutical product compendium owned by the drug uh, the pharmaceutical industries, but that's the authoritative source for uh, information on, on drugs for doctors and so on, indications, contraindications, side effects, but also for the patients. They have uh, contributed uh, to, to clinical decision support using SNOMED CT in Norway. And finally, the, the health registries in Norway, uh, and here the Cancer Registry of Norway, uh, in collaboration with the Directorate of eHealth, have done quite a lot of work in terminology binding of their of the registries. So, why clinical decision support? Uh, well, uh, shortly, well, uh, SNOMED CT can uh, be a tool in. Uh, in supporting different different types of, of uh, CDS. One thing is uh, providing the clinical guidelines, recommendations, and so on, uh, giving them to the, to the health professionals when they need it uh, at the point of care. Um, another one is uh, giving alerts and warnings uh, to prevent errors in treatment. Um, um, third one, it's in diagnostic support tools, helping the clinicians finding the right diagnosis. Uh, and the fourth is pathway support, as you see. Um, as we heard this morning from Marta, from the director of eHealth, I would say that the nursing, uh, standardized nursing care plans is a good example of that. Um, and SNOM CD can be used in, obviously, in all these types of CDS. Something about the knowledge base in in Norway well, it can somehow be summarized by this uh, doctor. Uh, there are a lot of sources that uh, the doctors, nurses, and other health professionals have to search and use every day. And uh, a lot of resources are put into producing different Norwegian guidelines, recommendations, and so on at the local uh, level at the hospital level um, uh, at the regional levels health regional levels and the national um, level uh, producing guidelines refer referral routines uh, uh, and so on treatment recommendations um, and the we're a small country so these are not always up to date um, so international guidelines that are more uh, frequently updated are widely used mostly british and american sources but the big problem is that all this this information from different sources has to be retrieved independently you have to search different places to get the information and uh, as we've heard earlier the clinicians don't have that time uh, so it might end up not using the knowledge that's out there um and uh, that's as the last point it can be solved uh, if it's uh, if the information is uh, to a much larger degree integrated into the ehrs so we risk that the the patient outcomes will be worse uh, um, by reducing the quality of care and we will have variations in care and uh, also inefficient workflow for the clinicians. So th these are just uh, some examples of, of the governmental sources. There are many more and also the commercial different sources, international uh, and national um, we use in Norway. So how how to solve this problem? Well, I guess it does not come as a surprise uh, that Snomid City can be used to link the the, the knowledge base, the knowledge source uh, to the point of care systems, um, ensuring the semantic uh, interoperability. Um, as an example, uh, we have this knowledge base, different guidelines and knowledge resources uh, semantically tagged with SNOMED CTIDs. IDs. Um, at the top and at the bottom, we have a, quite a standard EHR workflow. Uh, so when the clinician 
in the HR uh, registers a, a condition, in this case, the Snowman City concept of a, a brain hemorrhage. Uh, he or she will instantly get access to the right guideline. Um, and then, first of all, they will save time, but um, even more importantly, you get the information that you you're not if you search for information uh, you have to know that it, that it's there but here you're presented with the information you didn't even know uh, was there and you didn't and you, you cannot be up to date on on what guidelines what what's out there so and uh, you also ensure that you uh, get the updated information um so this is a bit of a busy slide, uh, but it can be a solution for the architecture of, of such a uh, system. What is important uh, is on the left side that you have different sources that uh, the clinicians already use, uh, which are semantically tagged with, with the Snowman CT or could also be tagged with other uh, metadata, um, but Snowman CT and you can do queries based on that or on classifications. Um, 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 and then you fetch uh, the knowledge, the uh, right information from one or more of these sources. Uh, and then the information is structured, formatted, and could be presented on, uh, on any platform format in the EHR or, or in an app or other places. So um, the challenges as snow, well, that's a relative thing, but Snowman City is not yet widely implemented in uh, our system. Um, and uh, as we've heard, there's, uh, there are lots of unstructured uh, data. Um, so some of the solutions uh, is obviously to use Snowman City as a reference terminology. Um, and use the structured data you already have uh, in your systems. Uh, and by extensive mapping that uh, SNOMED cities map to so many different systems, so you can use ensure semantic interoperability. Um, and as we heard in the previous talk about natural language processing uh, used to extract structured data. from examples. In some cases, the, the I said that implementing or integrating the, the CDS system into the EHR is, uh, has a big value. But in some cases, that's not uh, sensible because they have an old EHR or planning to update it or get a new one. Even then, you can use Nomad City as an efficient tool. In this case, specific use case uh, done for a hospital, uh, we uh, make an app for, for a department of neurology used in acute stroke care. So they can use bedside, use this app uh, to get the relevant information. Um, here we use Nomad City as the uh, interface terminology. Uh, and as I mentioned, you can fetch information from different uh, sources. Uh, and the LI mentioned earlier in the middle, it's the hospital guidelines, uh, which from my experience quite often are not easy to access. Uh, sometimes they're only available in PDFs, but more commonly they are in all hospital systems and with very bad search functionalities. Many clinicians carry papers with with uh, hospital guidelines with them in their pocket. So, using um, this tool, you can easily access the guidelines. And they, as I said, they put a lot of resources making the guidelines, but not making them available to the clinicians. Um, and the, the third uh, source here is is from the Norwegian Directorate of Health. So you choose one of these. Um, and uh, this source is then uh, tagged with Snowman CT, and uh, the CMS is uh, integrated to uh, Snowstorm, so you can use the ECLs. Um, uh, 
Another way, as I mentioned, is to use the existing structured elements in the EHR. ICPC2 is uh, um, used in the primary healthcare sector in uh, Norway um, as the uh, classification. And uh, here you can fetch content from multiple sources uh, using uh, SNOMED CT as a reference terminology and presenting it within the guideline within the EHR. NLP or natural language processing, we heard about in the previous session, uh, which of course is very promising also in the on this topic in uh, clinical decision support and presenting the correct uh, or the relevant information at the point of care to the clinicians. Um, here we have a, an EHR demo. Uh, the um, NLP engine is, uh, is uh, delivered by care indexing that's uh, made in Denmark. They are no part, part of the of Rhapsody, it's an American company. Uh, so in this demo, we have a quite a standard EHR setup in the SOAP format with, a, with the subjective objective assessment plan. So it's a semi-structured uh, EHR. Uh, and from this free text within these fields, we can extract SNOMED CT concepts. Um, uh, here, the preferred terms are in Norwegian, and we see there are some negations and so on. And when you have these structured elements, you can query different sources. Um, so again, uh, in Norway, we, actually, we have access to the BMJ best practice through the government who we'll pay for it. Uh, so in this case, you can choose the authoritative information from, from uh, BMJ. So here showing an uh, example of some alerts, warnings. Um, here we're using the, the CDS hooks. Uh, let's say we have an old lady with an uh, extensive list of conditions, problems, uh, medications, uh, quite a common situation. Uh, then her renal function is declining. Um, and uh, then she develops some symptoms of Parkinson's disease. And you want to relieve her symptoms, maybe try some anti-Parkinson drug. Um, here it's Pramipexol or Cifrol. Uh, and when trying to prescribe that, uh, You're getting a warning uh, that you, due to uh, reduced renal function, uh, you should lower the dose or consider some other drug. Um, and so guidance is given on what you should do. And then if you ignore the warning, you will get another one. Uh, <laughs> so as uh, Another example of, of uh, warning or an alert uh, is shown here. Um, let's say the same lady complains of a headache. Um, um, what to do? Well, she has all this list of conditions and all the medications. Um, could it be a side effect? Could it be something else? This is a major issue in this type of patients. Uh, they usually have these long lists of, of <laughs> of medications and they are more prone to side effects the elderly population and the, it's a major thing about the geriatricians that you should actually reduce their medications for most of the patients so using the felis cataloging or the pharmaceutical product compendiums uh, C, uh, cds service we see that uh, uh, the SNOMED CT concept headache uh, and uh, all the drugs uh, are uh, sent to their service and we'll get this uh, result saying that uh, Aricept, which is one of the drugs she's uh, on, 
uh, it's an anti-Alzheimer drug. Uh, it has headache as a very common side effect. Um, and that's not always a doctor who has that in mind uh, or remembers that. So, And we see the other drugs also has headache as a um, side effect, but that's common or less common. So in this case, to discontinue the drug would be a, a sensible option if you're not suspecting that it's any serious thing going on. And, and, and that's quite common as the disease progresses, you usually uh, discontinue the drug as the as it's uh, has a moderate effect. Some sh short takeaways. Um, I think our, our task is to to show the the benefits and the advantages of SNOMED City and encourage uh, institutions to implement SNOMED City by showing what is possible to do. And as always, involve the end users, meaning the health professionals, in and identify their basic, basic challenges and what we can, what can easily be solved now, and what is more more complex. Um, at the same time, we facilitate for more advanced tools, and as Nomad City hopefully is more widely implemented. Um, so. Um, there's built something valuable today and some is better than none. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Eric. Um, Eric will now take any questions. Um, as a reminder, if you're in the room, just please take a step up to the microphone and speak clearly into it so our online attendees can hear your question. And if you are attending online, please feel free to put your questions in the Q&A box. So are there any questions in the room? So one question we've got, are: what are the main benefits that effective clinical, oh, Sorry, effective clinical knowledge and decision support provide for clinicians, patients, and society. Um, well, uh, for patients, better outcomes, uh, obviously. Um, that's very important. Uh, for the society, both patient outcomes, but also the economic uh, um, effects. And for the clinicians, there's, uh, I guess, like many places, they are, they have too much to do. We have a problem recruiting uh, enough clinicians, both nurses and doctors in our country. So uh, to make them spend more time with their patients and not looking up in different sources and spend time doing non-patient related uh, work, that's, that's their main advantage and making their everyday work better, I believe, yeah. Thanks for the presentation. Um, one question, do you have some kind of system in place to see that they use uh, the, uh, the alerts or the, the information that you offer them so that you can follow up that they have found it or that, that they're using the extra added value that you're offering with your implementation? Do you check that in one way or another? Yeah. The, the alerts and warnings I showed uh, now are not implemented in the clinical systems uh, yet. And that's a project we do with, with the pharmaceutical compendium using the already CD um, side effect search among them. So not yet, no. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, we have uh, for uh, one of these uh, showing where we used ICPC2, we've done that in clinical practice. And it, it's an interesting use case where that was a provider of, of a private provider of, uh, of mostly digital consultations. And they ha have to ha have their own guidelines. Uh, they cannot, for instance, prescribe strong uh, analgesics or, or antibiotics for any condition. But the, their guidelines were very difficult to find. Even the doctors didn't know they existed. So by having this service, uh, they could easily uh, know that, uh, access the guidelines and, and know that they they exist. So yeah. 
Um, hi, it's Kai Keeley from Snowman International. Um, some clinicians, uh, you know, if they're getting a lot of alerts, they, you know, they complain of alert fatigue. Yeah. Um, I wondered if you'd experienced anything like this or if you've given it any thought, any strategies to, to avoid this issue? Well, that's a very good question. Um, well, these systems before being widely implemented have definitely to be tested. Uh, and fatigue alert is, is a major thing. It might be counterproductive to have uh, such a service. Uh, um, so um, the strategy is to prevent them. I, I guess, again, uh, involve the end users. You have to involve the doctors, the nurses, when you make the solutions from the beginning, yeah. Okay, are there any other questions in the room for Eric? No, okay, we've um, not had any of us come through online. So with that, um, we will conclude the session. So thank you very much, Eric, if everyone could give another round of applause. Thank you.